Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the books that I read in January. All 17 of them. read 17 books in January so if I am looking down during this video it's just because I'm I have some notes um, so I have like kind of a hard copy book that I track all of the books that I read during the month and then I also uh, I update usually by the end of the month I still have to do last month's uh, updates but um, I also update the, uh, all of the books that I'm reading or I want to read on Goodreads. So if you're on Goodreads, um, my link is in the description below. Come f friend me on Goodreads. I'd love to see what you guys are reading. But in January, I read 17 books. And when I say read, I mean that was a combination between like actually physically reading books as well as audiobooks. So how did I read 17 books in January? My job, I can listen to audiobooks all day long while I'm working, so that is pretty much the reason why I could read that much. Uh, in the past, before I had this, my, my current job, I think I may, I think the most I ever did read was like six or seven books, so it's, it's definitely, I wouldn't get discouraged if you're like, oh my god, 17 books, how I could never read that much. Anyways, I digress. Let's get into the, the video. Um, I have my assistant Salem here for the video. Um, so yeah, I got the cat and I have some books. So let's start talking. So the first book that I read was called Dandelion by Gabby Hanna. I'm pretty sure she's on she's either like a big social media person or maybe a talk show or something like that but she wrote a poetry book um, and that was the first book that I read in January um, I think thinking back to when I read it it was very much in the same kind of style as like Ruby Core's like milk and honey and like um, our H sins books I think um, like they have like some poetry passages and then they also have like imagery throughout it I think I read um, the dandelion book in like maybe two hours maybe even less than that I gave it three stars uh, not one that I particularly you know loved but it was a good it was a good start to the to the new year for reading Next book that I read, and this was the first audiobook that I started the month off with, was You by Caroline Kep Kepnes, Kepnes? Ugh, butchering that, um, but I read that uh, on audiobook on Libby and I gave that one four stars. I think everybody kind of knows about this book, it's been made into a Netflix show, it's like follows this guy that um, works in a bookstore and we kind of follow him around as he starts like he meets this girl in the bookstore he starts like stalking her and a whole bunch of like craziness happens because of that um yeah he ends up being like a serial killer it, it i i found it was uh pretty entertaining um kind of creepy while i'm working and he's talking about like murdering people um so i gave that one four stars all right, so the next book that I read uh, is not actually a fiction book, it's a non-fiction, but The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life by Mark Manson. Um, I think uh, I think I enjoyed this book looking back. I gave it a three star. Um, I find with non-fiction books, if they hold my attention, 
and I find them beneficial. I write down kind of like notes from, you know, listen while I'm listening to them. Um, I just kind of jot down any notes that I find are really interesting or that I would want to look back on. So yeah, I made some notes for that book, so it must have been good. <laughs> But yeah, I gave that one uh, three stars. Next book that I read, um, and some people might not include this. Sometimes I do include children's books on like my Goodreads that I'm reading, but I definitely don't write down every single like picture book that I've that I've read with Carwin. So I did this. I did include this, but it is a children's book. Uh, it's called Dog Man, Grime and Punishment. Um, I think I included this just because, I mean it's a graphic novel, but I did include this just because like for a kid's book, like it's still pretty hefty. Like I didn't read it in one night, like it was consistently reading with Carwin at story time over like weeks. So yeah, I did include that. What I read in January list. Um, and I did give that one four stars. I love reading this, I, these books. Um, I think this one is like the, I don't know, the seventh or eighth one. I don't even know what number we're on now, but yeah, there's a whole bunch in this series. Carwin loves them, I love them. Like, I love the little liporamas in them. If you have kids, I highly recommend them. Um, my son is, six almost seven and I've been reading these with him since he was probably almost five so yeah I highly recommend these if you have kids if you don't still fun um all right so the next one that I read was called Elevation by Stephen King um this one I gave two and a half stars um this one was an audiobook that I got from Libby again and it's very much, I think it was like a collection of short stories if I remember, but I remember like like listening to it and having to like rewind it a lot because I was super confused and like it was, I don't know, it was really weird. I wouldn't recommend it, like it, it is short for, it is like a shorter book. I think I listened to the audiobook in like four hours, three hours, something like that. So um, it is one of his shorter ones, but I would kind of skip it, honestly, if you come across it. The next one that I read, another audiobook, is called The Kiss Quotient. This is a romance uh, novel, and I gave uh, this one is by Helen Ho Hoeing, Hoeing? Um, and I gave this one four stars. I loved this book. So The Kiss Quotient, I feel like so many people on YouTube have reviewed this book, um, so I'll do like a very quick overview of what it, it follows the main character, Stella, and she is very successful in her life, in like her business, she's super smart, um, but she really struggles socially, she has Asperger's, so she hires an escort, a male escort, to kind of help teach her how to have a boyfriend and how to not be, I guess, as socially um, awkward. Um, anyways, with that, uh, she kind of, they, I mean, just read the book. <laughs> um, I don't want to give too much away, but that is generally the plot of the story. It follows the main character, Stella, while she's going through this kind of like fake relationship with uh, the male escort. Um, I really did like this book, but the ending, I just have this this kind of irritation with books when they just, everything works out perfectly. I get really irritated with that. Like, and there are definitely struggles between the two characters and they have like their own, each individual struggles. I just, the ending for me, it was just too perfect, so that kind of irritated me with it. But other than that, it was great. Um, and reading that book, it led me to 
the second book in this series, which is the next book that I read in January, which was called The Bride Test. Um, and I gave that one four stars as well. Um, this one follows, um, this one, it's not like a continuation of the first one. You can read the second one without reading the first one, but it does follow one of the secondary characters um, introduced in the first one. So the second one follows Kai. Um, he has autism and he is like 20 something. The story starts off with his mom uh, in the Philippines and she's trying to find a wife for Kai. Um, Anyways, she comes across this woman cleaning uh, the hotel where she's staying and she invites her to come just stay in the US for the summer, um, try to make a relationship work with Kai. Um, so she agrees to it because she uh, wants a better life for her and her daughter. Anyways, it kind of the book covers as they grow closer and um, it definitely um, dives into Kai's internal struggle with how he thinks of himself, and yeah, it's just it's really good. I I I love. I think I love this one more than the first one. Yeah, and this one it definitely gave what the first one like fell flat on for me. The ending, uh, it wasn't perfect. Um, things didn't work out perfectly. Um, they still turned out great, but not everything had like a perfectly tied bow on it. And that is what I need in a romance book. I needed to reflect um, real life just a little bit. If I want to, it to not be real life, I would read fantasy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I highly recommend this series. Um, it's so, so good and it's very steamy. So <laughs> the next book that I read was Homebody by Ruby Kaur. This one right here. I have this one in the physical copy. And I believe this is Ruby Kaur's third book of poetry. Oh, so, that's nice and fun. So, uh, and I have her other two books. I have, uh, she wrote Milk and Honey and What's the other one? Sun and Her Flowers, I think it's called. I gave this one three and a half stars. Um, it was good. Um, I, I, there are definitely passages in it that like I've bookmarked that I really love. Um, and I feel like maybe she wrote this during the pandemic. I'm not 100% sure on that, but there were some passages in it that made it feel like um, she was writing about being isolated in the pandemic and I mean she does write a lot about in this book her experience as like an immigrant um, so yeah I, I do recommend reading it it is one of those books that you can just read in like a couple hours so um, it is good I'm glad that I bought it and it, it'll be part of my collection still I, I love her first book as uh, uh, Milk and Honey. That one's my favorite that she's written. And the next book that I read was called The Library Book. Uh, this was a nonfiction book and it's all about 1986 fire at the Los Angeles Public Library. Um, and it just kind of goes over that whole investigation, whether or not it was, um, you know, done on purpose by somebody or if it was accidental it just kind of goes over that and it does throw in a lot of like his history of public libraries and stuff like that um i did give this one two and a half stars thinking back i feel like the author kept jumping around with like all of the information they were giving um just to make the book longer i feel like the whole book was about the the fire that occurred at the Los Angeles Public Library. Like that was what it was supposed to be about, but if you had just taken out what the author was talking about 
specifically with the fire in that investigation it could have been like 100 pages every like couple chapters they would throw in a whole bunch of historical information and yeah i don't know I, I, it wasn't my cup of tea um it was still kind of interesting at certain parts but um yeah i i wouldn't really recommend reading it <laughs> The next book that I read was the first uh, book in the Hunger Games series um, by Susan Orlean. I gave this one four stars. Um, I never read the Hunger Games series as a teen and I really like this one. I tend to really like not read books if I've seen the movie first just because I think everybody does this. You just picture what the movie shows you so like the characters you'll picture the actors or actresses and I don't really like doing that but um I, I it was on like my TBR to read for so long um so I gave it a shot and I really enjoyed it it is I found it a lot more graphic and violent than the book or the the movies um which I liked um and there were quite a few differences between the two um so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, the next one that I read was the second one in the Hunger Games series. I got it on audiobook again. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I gave that one a three stars. So not as good as the first one, but still I, I enjoyed reading it. Um, I think it is a good series. Um, Reading those two back to back, I did kind of feel, I don't know, like I was getting bored. So I haven't read the third um, Mockingjay, I think it is, um, the third one in the series. So I'm gonna have to read that one soon to finish up, finish up that whole tri trilogy. Um, but then I, I know that another one just came out, like I forget what it's called, but um, just to finish up the original Hunger Games series. I'll have to read the third one soon. But uh, yeah, after that I did read um, another, listen to another audiobook. I listened to one called The Arrangement by Robin Harding. This one was really, really weird. Um, it was pretty much the main character. She's in college. She's struggling, you know, financially just to make ends meet and pay her bills, blah, blah, blah. So she, um, one of her classmates tells her about this like website and she's like this sugar baby. Anyways, she gets involved in that whole scene and um, she becomes like obsessed with one of her sugar daddies and uh, yeah, a murder happens and yeah that's pretty much what it's all about but like the ending was um so predictable and just irritating that i could foresee it coming so like early on that yeah i just it wasn't the best so hence the one and a half star rating that i gave it the next book that i read i actually read this one in like a physical book but uh it was a library book and i've already taken it back but it was layla by colleen hoover i had so like such high expectations for this book because i read Ver verity verity um by colleen hoover and i loved it i loved it um i i it's been so long since i read a book that I was driving and doing errands and like I was in a parking lot parked in my car reading Ferrarity on my phone because it was that good like I didn't want to put it down. So I kind of had high expectations going into Layla and um, I knew that um, when I got it it was another kind of thriller. Um, it had like horror aspects of it but it was still kind of a thriller. I gave Layla a two star rating. Um, I think like it could have gone so many good ways, um, especially like once you're kind of getting into the book and you're settled into a good chunk of it, um, there's kind of this like haunted house kind of vibe that I got um, and I was definitely creeped out with that. But then like this, 
I would say the last, I don't know, 100 pages or so, I was just like, what? What? Yeah, um, I didn't really like how it ended and it ended so like perfect, like everything worked out and I don't know. We know how I feel about like perfect endings, but yeah, I was super disappointed with this one. But, and then the 14th, so I only got a few left. The 14th book that I read um, in January was called Keep Me Safe by Maya Banks. And if you ever say Maya Banks, you know that it's gonna be a steamy romance. <laughs> I listened to this one on audiobook. I can't even remember what it was about. I think it was about um, this, one of the characters, a uh, girl, she has like this special gift that if she touches people, she can see and feel exactly what they're feeling. So she, throughout her life, I think she's in her like early 20s or something like that, throughout her life, she's located so many like missing women, missing people, um, help locate them like children and stuff, but it's like severely affecting her mentally because she's experiencing the trauma she goes through it just with them. So uh, yeah, it, it kind of covers her and they're trying to locate, um, the other main characters are like these brothers and um, one of the brother's sister is missing. So they, t they get in contact with this girl and make her show where this person is and that um, it does cover um, the fact that this girl that has this special kind of gift she's being hunted by this guy that knows what she can do anyways um, <laughs> I gave that one three stars it was just kind of like an easy read to listen to while I was working and yeah it was it was steamy in parts it was good <laughs> the next book that I read um, was Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Um, this one, uh, this one's been on my TBR for so long. Oh my gosh, so, so long. I love this book. I gave Sharp Objects four stars. Um, I thought it was really, I mean, knowing the author, I was going into this with kind, of, with kind of expectations of it being very, you know, dark and graphic and violent, and it definitely held up with that. There, maybe I'll move you guys down here for a little bit because the sun is outrageous right now. I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. The ending was epic, in my opinion. Oh my gosh. Um, I actually listened to this on audiobook. Um, I got the physical copy after I finished it, but the ending was just... <laughs> um, so yeah, I gave Sharp Objects four stars. Highly recommend. The next book that I read um, in January was Normal People by Sally Rooney. And I've heard so many things about this book on YouTube, people reviewing it. Um, I feel like there's a huge divide. You either love it or you hate it. Um, I can definitely see where people are coming from if you don't vibe with it. The characters are, the two main characters in it, um, they're written kind of emotionally removed so you don't really like, I don't know, feel like a super strong connection with the characters. But yeah, this book, uh, Normal People, it follows Connell and Marianne, um, and it starts with them in high school. And Connell is like, you know, pretty popular, has a ton of friends, and Marianne is kind of like an outsider, kind of weird, you know, doesn't have a lot of friends. And they start a relationship in high school, but he doesn't, um, make it public knowledge. Um, kind of like he's embarrassed by her, stuff like that. Um, and then it follows them uh, from high school until kind of, I, I wanna say 
one of their last years in college um, and it just kind of follows that that time um, period but throughout the novel um, we see them you know in a relationship together we see them not in a relationship as you know just friends we see them you know with uh, other other partners and kind of felt a kinship with Marianne um, like how she views herself her home life um, she grew up pretty in a pretty rough like home and uh, pretty abusive home and that kind of trauma it translates to her um, her relationships and like just how she values herself and just the lengths that she kind of goes in her relationships to feel loved and worthy um, and yeah the ending I feel like people need kind of um, a perfect ending but I don't I hate it when books especially books with like relationships as the main um, you know driving force in a novel um, relationships are perfect and you know it's it's rare to have like a perfect relationship and everything work out and the ending of this it was very open-ended it didn't like tie anything up it's kind of left for the reader to interpret and come up with you know your own ideas with how things worked out i don't know if she's sally rooney is going to write you know maybe a second one a follow-up i don't know um I don't think so but uh, I know that they did turn this book into a show and I heard that the show is better than the book but yeah I, I liked it um, I gave it four stars and the 17th book that I read in January um, the last one was this one right here I have it the couple next door uh, by Sherry LaPena Lapina. So yeah, um, I do have the physical copy of it, but I actually listened to it on audiobook. So I gave this one four stars. Um, there were definitely parts of it. So this book follows um, a couple and uh, they, Anne and Marco Conti. So it follows this couple, they go over to their neighbor's house um, one night, which is like right next door um, for like a birthday dinner party thing. And they keep their six month old daughter, I wanna say, I think so. Left their, their baby, their six month old baby at home in her crib sleeping. Um, and they went next door to the dinner party. Um, they had like the baby monitor, but the screen wasn't working. So they were just kind of listening and then checking on the baby every like half hour or something like that. Anyways, um, during that night, once they go home, the baby is gone. And that's what like the book is about is the investigation. We find out like everything, why, who took the baby, everything like that. Well, I, I, I enjoyed this book. I thought it was really good. The twists in it were good. Um, the husband in it was kind of annoying. And I don't know, the mom in it too was kind of annoying. Um, but the ending in it uh, made it a four star for me. Um, yeah, it was twisted. And I like a good evil twist. <laughs> So yeah, I enjoyed this one. Four stars. That is all of the books that I read in January. That's pretty much like a book every day or every two days. So yeah, um, thanks for watching this video. Um, what have you guys been reading? What are you reading right now? Uh, tell me in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.